Hello, everyone. My name is Asaf, and I'll be presenting our paper on the sample complexity of primary learning and branded Gaussian. So this is joint work with Hassan Ishtiani and Gautam Kamal. OK, so in a nutshell, uh, we, in our paper, we prove the following two theorems stated here informally. So the first one says that the sample complexity uh, of learning uh, Gaussians with known covariance matrix under epsilon delta differential privacy uh, is the following. And the second one says that the sample complexity of learning uh, Gaussians with arbitrary covariance matrix under epsilon delta differential privacy uh, is the following. Okay. So differential privacy uh, is considered to be the gold standard for modern private data analysis. And it has the following definition. So we say a randomized algorithm is epsilon delta differentially, a randomized algorithm T is epsilon delta differentially private. If for all neighboring data sets D and D prime that differ in a single entry and every set of possible outputs, outputs S, we have that the output of the algorithm T given D and the output of the algorithm T given D prime uh, is comparable in this sense. And so we call an epsilon zero, uh, we call epsilon zero differential privacy pure differential privacy, and we call epsilon delta differential privacy approximate differential privacy. Okay, so the distribution learning setting that we consider is the following. So we have an unknown distribution P. We have IID sample access from this distribution, and we use these samples as inputs to some algorithm. And our goal is for this algorithm to output some distribution H that's close to P and total variation distance with high probability, say nine over 10. Okay, so without uh, specifying uh, any, uh, anything else, this is not really a well-defined problem. And so, we, so for, for a given class of distributions H, we want our algorithm to output some H that competes with the best H star in this class. And the best H star in this class is the distribution in the class that is the closest to P. And, we, and we'll, for, for the rest of the talk, we'll call this distance between P and H star opt. Okay, and so, in, in, and so when we assume that P is equal to H star, or put another way, when we assume P is in the class, uh, we call this the realizability assumption, and the bounds that I'll present in this talk are, are going to be for this uh, setting, but more generally in our paper, we have uh, bounds for the semi-agnostic setting. Um, and so this distribution, distribution learning is a really well-studied problem, and the question we're specifically interested in is, uh, and what's the, is, is the question that we're interested in is what, what the sample complexity of learning a given class H is. And so our focus is on statistical efficiency rather than computational efficiency of these algorithms. And so when H is the class of Gaussians, this is a very well understood um, you know, problem and the sample complexity is, is very well understood. Okay, so in private distribution learning, we have the same problem, uh, uh, problem setting, except now we want our algorithm to satisfy epsilon delta differential privacy. And so when H is the class of Gaussians, uh, the sample complexity is actually uh, not so clear. Okay, so before we jump into the, the private bounds, I wanna quickly mention uh, some folklore bounds. So for learning a univariate Gaussian total variation distance uh, up to alpha, uh, the sample complexity is, is the following. It grows one over alpha squared. Um, and so in the case where we have a we want to learn a d-dimensional Gaussian with a known covariance or equivalent in identity covariance, uh, it, uh, the sample complexity goes linearly with d. And finally, in the case where we have an arbitrary covariance matrix, uh, sample complexity goes uh, quadratically with the dimension d. Okay. And so what happens in the private setting? And so for pure differential privacy, we actually need to make assumptions about the parameters of the distribution, okay? Um, and so more specifically, in the case where we have a d-dimensional Gaussian, we actually need to assume that the mean vector lies in some known uh, L2 ball, say, uh, in RD, and that the condition number of the covariance matrix also lies in some um, known range, right? And so the sample complexity here will depend on the strength of our assumption. So the weaker the assumption we make about these parameters of our distribution, um, the worse our sample complexity is going to grow. And so, and so uh, we can actually use in certain settings, in certain cases, approximate differential privacy to eliminate this parameter dependence, okay? Okay, and so what do we know so far? So for univariate Gaussians, we can use approximate, we have an approximate differential private uh, learning algorithm that has uh, sample complexity uh, that grows as the following. And this is uh, sh shown by, by Karun Vaban. Um, and, and more generally, in the d-dimensional case where we, do, uh, where we know the covariance matrix, uh, Ban Kaman, Steinke, and Wu showed that uh, we also do not need to make any assumptions on the parameters. And so this, left, this leaves open an interesting problem, uh, the most general case where we do not know the covariance matrix either. And we show in our paper that, this, uh, that, that we also do not need to make any uh, assumptions uh, on the parameters as well. 
and we give the following upper bound. And finally, uh, we also sharpen uh, the upper bound for the case where we where we know the covariance matrix, and, and crucially, we get rid of this um, extra alpha term in the in the last uh, term in the bound. Um, yeah. Okay. So hypothesis selection uh, is a nice framework that's very like com com compatible to distribution learning, and it has the following, and it's a, it's a, it's it's described as the following. So we're given a known collection of distributions uh, h1 through hm. And we have IID data from some unknown distribution P. And so our goal is the following. We have to uh, recall that H star is the closest or best distribution in the class. And so our goal is to output a distribution H in the class uh, such that the total variation distance between H and the unknown distribution P uh, is at most some C constant C times opt plus alpha, where opt is the, 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 the best, uh, best we could hope for. Right? And so this is called these, uh, this is called a semi-agnostic guarantee. Um, so this is very well understood, and there are many uh, simple algorithms that with uh, high probability satisfy um, that the output is three times op, uh, plus alpha close to the unknown distribution, uh, and the sample complexity of, of these algorithms grows uh, logarithmically with n. Okay, so clearly this is really applicable to distribution learning because we can take h to be our class, or, uh, or we can actually take a cover for the class uh, h and use that as our input. You know, class of interest that uses the input. And so in private hypothesis selection, um, we have the same setting, but now we want to uh, respect uh, epsilon, uh, we want to re respect differential privacy. And so Bon Kaman, Stein, and Wu gave uh, a pure differentially private algorithm that we'll call PHS uh, with sample complexity that as well, uh, that also grows logarithmically uh, in the number of hypotheses. Uh, and in our, in our, also in our paper, we give a much simpler algorithm than the PHS algorithm that also has some uh, additional benefits with the same sample complexity. Okay, and so as we saw before, we, we saw these pure differential, in the last slide, we saw these pure differential uh, differential privacy, we saw these pure differentially private algorithms uh, that worked for uh, finite classes. And so one might wonder, what can we do for, for infinite classes? And so there's some bad news. Uh, and basically any pure differential private algorithm can only work for finite classes. And so if the class of interest has uh, has no finite covering, uh, like think of Gaussians, what can we hope to do? Uh, and so uh, uh, BKSW also gave an epsilon delta differentially private algorithm that we'll call GAPMAX that can handle actually uh, 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 certain infinite classes. And so the key idea in, in, um, for this algorithm is to use a cover for the class that is uh, locally small in some sense. Okay, and so a bit more formally, uh, fix some gamma, uh, we say a set of distributions H is K gamma locally small. If the gamma total variation ball centered at every distribution H in the class uh, contains at most K distributions from the class, you know, the set. Okay, so we can visualize this. So consider this as our class of interest H, and let's just assume that it, like imagine that it goes on infinitely in, in all directions. And so let's consider a, a, a side cover for this class. And so recall that we want our cover to be uh, locally small in the sense that we defined in the previous slide. And so what we can do is look at the gamma total variation ball uh, centered at any of the points in the cover. And if you look carefully, you can see that regardless of which point that we center this ball on, um, there can be there is a, there are 21 points uh, in, in in the ball. Sorry. So this cover is a uh, psi cover for H that is also 21 gamma locally small. Okay, so this seems uh, uh, pretty straightforward. We show the cover and we show that we, 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 ha we, ha we, we got a cover and we showed that it was locally small. And so, but there's actually some bad news. Um, and so constructing locally small covers is a really, really challenging uh, analytical task. And so what we give in our, in our paper is a simple tool or idea to, to prove the existence of, of these lo of locally small covers for a class using a relationship between uh, packings and covers. And so if you look at our class again, and this time we look at a specific indiv individual point H, and we look at the gamma total variation ball around this 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 point. Uh, and then we actually consider a, a psi cover for this gamma total variation ball specifically. Uh, what we proved is that it's sufficient to show that the the psi cover the the psi cover for the gamma total variation ball centered around every H uh, is small or at, like has size at most k. So what what we specifically prove is that if you can show this. Uh, it translates to showing that there is a k gamma locally small two psi cover for the class H. 
And so this is actually a much easier problem to solve. So we can see an example of this. So if you consider the class of Gaussians um, with the with uh, indeed dimensions with zero mean and uh, arbitrary covariance matrix, uh, we uh, we can first find a small uh, cover for the gamma total variation ball around the standard normal distribution. And let's say that this cover has size k. And so what we can do is actually we can modify this cover to be uh, to cover the gamma total variation ball around any other uh, zero mean Gaussian. And so we do it in the following way. We take uh, every element in the cover for uh, every element in the original cover and replace it with this uh, scaled distribution. Um, and, and it works because of the following inequality that basically just says that when we when we scale in this way, the distances between the elements in the cover or the elements in the ball uh, won't change. Okay, so it ends up being a valid cover. And so essentially what we've shown is that we can cover the total variation, the gamma total variation ball around any zero mean Gaussian. Um, um, and so based on what we saw in the previous slide, this translates to saying that there exists a K gamma locally small two psi cover. And so this is a much simpler uh, task than actually deriving a cover, uh, a psi cover for the class and then showing that it was uh, um, a K gamma, locally, uh, K gamma locally small. And so we can use the cover that we, uh, we, we've proved to exist uh, with the gap max algorithm uh, to, to learn. And so this is the, this is the, this is the core of the idea uh, of, of our proof in, in our paper. Okay, and so to conclude, we can talk about some future directions. Um, so, um, so our algorithms that we present are non-constructive and inefficient, so it'd be nice to have explicit and efficient algorithms for this problem. Um, and our bounds for the general Gaussians are tight in everything but this uh, one, uh, in, all, in two out of three of the terms, and so it'd be nice if we can show a lower bound uh, for that, that, that last term. Um, and so in our paper, as I mentioned, we have agnostic bounds for modest levels of OCK uh, that have extra factors. So it'd be nice if we could shave these log factors and handle uh, a wider range of values of OCK. So thanks for listening.